All right, I'm gonna take this because this is one of my most favorite spots in Idaho. We've traveled a lot around Idaho. I come to this very place quite often with my family. It's right at the south end of the Sawtooth. Absolutely beautiful up in this little canyon here. I've actually never been to Grand Jean, so I don't even know where we are right now. It's good. We are, this says South Idaho 21, which I know takes us to Stanley. That does not take us to Stanley. That's <laughs> South. Okay, so North takes us to Stanley. You're gonna wanna go that way. Don't listen, John. Go, go North that way to Stanley, or you can go right down here, six miles, you end up in Grand Jean. Okay, so how far away from Stanley are we? We're approximately 40 miles from Stanley. Stanley does get busy this time of year. Uh, that's a very good point. What we often like to do, because if you don't like the crowds and things like that and kind of be one, a little more secluded, is you can camp on this road, anywhere along this road or at State Park Campground or stay at the actual Sawtooth Lodge. And um, Stanley is just um, a skip up the road. Go up there, spend the day at Stanley, spend the day at Redfish Lake, you're back in your camp at night. And there's an actual natural hot springs called Sacagawea. Nice little rock pools right along the beautiful, crystal clear, absolutely awesome South Fork of the Payette River. Okay, I'm glad I have you because you actually know where we are, what we're doing. Let's go with that. What I'm gonna tell you people out there that I learned the hard way a couple of times is Idaho has a lot of places that have zero cell range. This is called an Idaho Gazetteer. Gazetteers are made for all states. So you can actually find your way around the old fashioned way without a phone. I've never seen one of these before. And if you're Chad's age, you're like, yeah, totally. What the hell? I have four of those. So that takes us to Grand Jean. Yes. That takes us to Stanley. Right. So we're heading six miles down this, down way. this way. It's a dirt road, but it's a nice, uh, any two wheel drive car can make it. All right, let's go find this go. place. The valley is originally settled, more, more or less settled by Emile Grandjean. Uh, in 1909, he built probably this original structure, okay. and then it's been in continu op continuous operation as a lodge since 1927. 1927, wow. So these logs were probably put here by Emile himself. Probably. Two weeks ago, so early June of this year, uh, we had a landslide after an inch of rain in an hour. Um, and so that blew out Grandjean Creek above us, which opened up the waterfall. Um, so what was a small waterfall is now multiple large waterfalls. It's beautiful. Uh, yeah, it's gorgeous. It's a great improvement. Uh, and it just gives us an opportunity to kind of move dirt around, uh, play with what we've got, and then work with the Forest Service on some things that have been outdated or need updates. Most folks that come up, um, just the family hangout and geothermal pool is the main attraction. Uh, we have a small nature trail that's great for families with little kids. Uh, it makes a good like short bike loop. And then on site, uh, we have an outfitter who runs trail rides and RV sites that are available for nightly, we weekly rentals. And then we have a whole bunch more that are on seasonal rentals. So we have a full service restaurant Runs breakfast, lunch, and dinner, milkshakes all day. Very important. Yes. Milkshakes all day, anytime. Anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Very welcome. I thought you were getting a milkshake. I decided to have an oat soda instead. <sighs> I'm staying. I'm enjoying my beer. God, once it hits your lips, it's really good. This is the sweetest damn milkshake. <laughs> I'd say most folks just come to have the rustic getaway experience, but you're definitely in a quieter, older space on the edge of the wilderness that's really like no place else. So this is my first time to the valley because I think Stanley gets all, you know, Redfish Lodge, Redfish Lake, and I love Stanley, but I, I've missed this. I've missed this. I've driven by this a thousand times, and this is an incredible valley. You can see the sawtooth Right, right there. there. Yeah. It's a little bit quieter, slower very pacing. secluded. It's very secluded. Yes, very secluded. And I dig that. Yeah. Looking at this valley now, it's beautiful, it's yeah. green, it's luscious. You, you said it's luscious. It's luscious. The valley is luscious. <laughs> I mean, maybe I would think like your girlfriend is luscious, but maybe the valley's lush. I've never called a woman luscious. This must be an age difference. <laughs> <laughs> the Sawtooth Lodge has these cabins like the one we're sitting in right now. Rustic accommodations. This is classic Idaho, which I love. I think it's cool. You know, personally for me, I love history you can touch. So I love the fact that, you know, you can go down in that lodge down there and probably Emile Grandjean place those logs. Sometimes I don't want to pack up, you know, set up my tent. So something like this is really nice if you just want to almost set it and forget it. They do not have air conditioning, so be aware of that. 
They also have another couple cabins that have multiple beds, kitchen, kitchen plumbing, adds. yep, yep, hot shower. You can go hop in the geothermal pool, which is right there. Um, everything's within close walking distance. And you know, I'm sure we would bring food with us, but I just smelled the most and saw the most amazing hamburger that came out of that kitchen. I think you would really appreciate the double cabin you and Kathleen could sleep in the one side and then lock the door to your children <laughs> who would be on the other side. That's right. It's your own private Grand G in Idaho. Ooh, they should make a shirt that says that. Uh... About a quarter mile away from Sawtooth Lodge is this natural hot springs called the Sacagawea Hot Springs. And it's right along the gorgeous South Fork of the Payette River. These little rivulets from the hot spring that are coming out are super hot. Don't take your dog down there. My dog's got his paws burned a little bit. Watch your kids down there. Wear footwear. Any of these things that are coming directly out of the wall, you do not want to stand or sit in, okay? People take time to build these different pools and different little rivers of these super hot water mixing with the uh, river water. Oh yeah, that's nice. Oh yeah. This is the perfect pool. The other really weird thing about this is that you'll find, and you can see it in the water, is the hot water separates towards the top and the cold water goes towards the bottom. And so if anytime you get really hot and you feel a hot channel coming, just reach down to the bottom of the pool and start washing up that cold water and it'll cool you out. Let's be honest, not all natural hot springs are built the same. Some of them can get a little bit nasty. They're muddy, they're icky, they smell bad. This is not that. This is very nice, very clean. It has a nice sandy bottom. I'm not uncomfortable sitting here. I could actually fall asleep here, honestly. The smell, I think it has something to do with this river running, but I can't smell that sm sulfur, that rotten egg smell you kind of get in some natural hot springs. One thing is, Chad was right. I have to sometimes do a little movement because if I sit here still, the temperature at the top of the pool gets up to an unbearable level. But I just kind of uh, wiggle about a little bit and it becomes the right temperature for me. So, Sacagawea Hot Springs, doing it right. One, two, to book your stay, visit SawToothLodge.com. Please subscribe to our channel for weekly adventures in Idaho and beyond. Follow us on social media. If you have any questions for us, we would love to see it in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Man, it's like the perfect temperature. It is very nice in the higher elevations of Idaho this time of year, Chad.